Hi, I'm Sophie Powers, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Hey, what's up, guys? Rob here, Front Row Live Entertainment. I'm hanging out here at Atlantic with a new artist just recently signed to Atlantic Records. But on top of that, it was a label that Gabe Supporta was a part of. Uh, I grew up listening to Cobra Starship and his band Midtown. So to be an artist under a label with him or just to be in any kind of mentorship with him, I feel like is amazing. So, so crazy. Sophie, like, how did this collaboration team up? Like, how did this happen for you? Um, well, actually, I had my last show of my first U.S. tour run with No Offense. Shout out No Offense. And the L.A. show, I had my friend Jules come and she at the time was flown out to LA like by Gabe and Tag. And one of the um ARs over at Tag, his name's Joe Buscema, um, he came and saw me perform and was like, Now we have to sign Sophie. <laughs> and so then I started chatting with Tag and obviously Jules is my good friend. So I was like, Imagine if like me and my bestie signed to the same label. <laughs> and then um yeah, we both got signed, I guess. Um, so yeah, pretty crazy. And it's crazy because it's happening fast. You got signed, uh, the announcement was a few days ago. The debut single on this label dropped a few days ago as well, Nosebleed, and you're killing it. Um, talk to me a little bit about this single and why did you feel like this was like that perfect introduction to this new world? Um, that's a good question. I think it was a good introduction in the sense that the song is more experimental then um, even my previous songs were a little bit more pop punk and obviously I see myself like still making like pop punk music but this song was something that I haven't showcased but I've been wanting to showcase of me kind of rapping and talking more because I've grown as um, just a an artist in terms where I can freestyle now yeah. I couldn't do that before I can I can pull out different characters for my voice and I think this song was really um, that good intro in a in a sense of that way. Does I like that. that sense? Yeah, it does, and I like that you mentioned that you can freestyle this time around. Because when I listen to this song in particular, I don't feel like you wrote lyrics. I feel like you either wrote bars or you just freestyle during the recording process. W am I close to what that experience was like when <laughs> well, you were uh, in thank, the creative process? Thank you. Yeah, literally all my stuff is me, Mike, and Cam. Like the three of us pretty much make everything. Cam's my co-writer and Mike's the producer. So me and Cam, like, I'll freestyle flows and um, melodies, and then Cam will just help me fill it in with lyrics. And I really wanted this song to be about seeing everything and feeling nothing. And Gabe actually is like, you're like Daria. Like, you know the show <laughs> Daria? He's like always telling me, like, you're like Daria. Um, probably butchering her name, but yeah, I... I think this song definitely fits that Daria character that he keeps telling me I am. Yeah, you should have done that whole Daria theme, like the outfit and everything. Well, this is the thing. <laughs> I am also a fashion. I literally designed this outfit I'm wearing right now. So the fact that you say I should have done that, I had a design literally inspired by Daria, but I thought it was too on the nose. I'm not trying to copy. Like, I get I am, like, her in some some aspects yeah. but i'm like i also still gotta be sophie sophie powers yeah so um yeah i went with like this whole tennis court vibe and we're doing a music video actually on friday um for it so hopefully you'll see that <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned talk to me a little more about your uh your relationship with cameron and mike just because as you mentioned they are your frequent collaborators um how did the two of you kind of come together and what is it about Mike that you like with his songwriting that helps you become a better songwriter and what, or sorry, Cameron, uh, that helps you become a better songwriter and what is it about Mike that you like that helps you become a better artist when he's producing you? Um, well, me and Mike always say we're like the Walmart version of Billy and Phineas um, <laughs> because Mike actually looks like Phineas, like it's crazy. And when I had blonde hair and Billy had blonde hair, we would get compared to them, so yeah. it was funny. But I could, I'm not comparing myself to them. Um, don't come at me, Billy Stans. I just think that in terms of the way we work, he's literally like a brother to me at this point. I moved out to LA. I met Mike when I was 15 in Toronto through my old manager. And um, because he was living out there. 
and now I and then I moved to LA when I was 16 into like this house of musicians and producers and this was during the so there was nothing else to do me and Mike just worked every day and our music tastes kind of just over that five month period of just like working together every day our music tastes literally just aligned and you know we got really close and he's been on all my tours he's also my musical director and guitarist um so touring with him you know we're refining the tracks even as we tour so yeah it's kind of like he's my other half in a sense that way and then cam fills in the picture in the sense that he also is toronto boy but um was in a big canadian band called down with webster i'm not oh, sure oh wow yeah yeah. So. That's why the name sounded a little familiar. Okay. I can. Okay. Yeah. So Cam was in that band and he was, I guess, one of their lead writers. And um, That's where those hip hop kind of like flows kind of come from. Well, the hip hop flows, yes, are, would actually be me. It's more the bars, like, because I'll, I'll put a flow together, or I shouldn't say it's mostly me. I'm more melodies and flows, but yeah, definitely hip hop influenced. Um, comes from Cam. Also from me, though, because I, like, love hip-hop and grew up listening to that. But Cam definitely has a solid background in that, and that guy's pen game is crazy. I just, I learn so much from him every day, and he, he has this sort of character that he can pull out, like, just from me, because he knows me so well, and Mike knows me so well, so he can do the same thing and pull out that character for my music of, like, what sounds, and he, they both know what I want so well. So, um, yeah, even like I'm open to work with other people, but I know that it, they're going to be the final two who get like, you know, say and we're going to refine it. I'm kind of jealous that you're working like your team is basically people I grew up listening to. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Um, when we talk about Nosebleed, uh, take me into the studio. And like you mentioned earlier, like this was a, this was a different kind of song that you created. So where do you feel that you felt challenged on this song? Like, was there something in the vocals that that? made it difficult for you to kind of nail it was it something in the writing process like where do you feel that was for you that is a good question because this was one of those songs that we basically made it like in two days one day and that does not happen normally if it takes like a week to even like finish a song sometimes months right the song was just a quick write I think I was it was like just after like there was like a third wave of the and I was so like just frustrated so everything came pretty easily like I think I was just I was ready to you know let that let that shit out can I swear on here yeah, you can <laughs> okay yeah I was ready to let that shit go um and I think the most challenging thing would be after that day after those two days when we finished it then going back and refining those vocals and having to get back to that space that I was in when I wrote that song like a year later so I was like trying to remember. I'm like, okay, angsty, like Sophie. Where where were you at during this moment? So that's what I was trying to do. Now earlier you mentioned uh, choreography. So how important is choreography to your music? Um, and are you do you find do you do you call yourself a choreographer as well, like or a dancer as well, or is that something that you kind of have to keep at it to kind of get comfortable with? I mean, I don't know if I'd call myself a dancer, but I definitely grew up doing a lot of dance and I've always loved to dance. And I did a lot of musical theater, which involves dance. And I, I was like Simba on The Lion King. I did a lot of local plays in like Mississauga, Ontario, where I'm from and like Toronto. Um, but I wouldn't say that it's necessary for my songs. Like I'm not thinking about the choreography when I'm writing it. This actually will be my first music video that I'm filming this Friday that I wanted to have like major choreo for. And obviously I've done like the dance trends on TikTok with my other songs or attempted to. But you know, I'm kind of just like, if it's fun to dance to, then people will dance to it regardless. I don't have to go and make up a whole dance, That's you know? True. That's kind of like what I want to make sure though like people just wanted to have fun to the song yeah that's true that's true um you are getting ready for tour I mean not just now but like in June you're gonna head back on the road um supporting water parks which I'm super excited because those guys are insane live but they're just insane people to hang out with uh so what are you looking forward to on this tour and what can fans look forward to from you on this tour Okay, so I just have to preface this by saying water parks, 
I grew like I'm they're my middle school like Austin was my middle school crush I'll be honest (laughs) but I'm really really looking forward to this tour not only because of that but because I feel like this is a a very like me and Austin or just water parks in general our sounds and kind of interests like Austin's also a fashion designer I'm also a fashion designer there's hyper punk there's there's rock there's punk there's pop like in water park sound as well as mine so I just want to take you to the next level um I'm getting probably a a bassist if not me and Mike are going to go over the set and just do what we can to incorporate more moments and bring the energy up to match water parks I think more than any other tour before like I just want this to be an elevated version of all the shows that I've done um and you know we're gonna be in rehearsals I did just get back from tour like two days ago from Carly Hansen so whatever we were kind of not sure about that was murky waters from that tour we're gonna go and refine and I'm gonna play some more unreleased songs because we'll be finishing music before that tour so I'm super stoked what did you learn from that Carly Hansen tour because she's uh, like Carly is insane also another insane artist yeah Carly is amazing performer like she I was blown away honestly I wasn't even expecting that um and I'd listened to her music before but what I would say we learnt um, from that tour, I think would be a lot of it, just planning. Like I would go on stage, which kind of made it more fun actually, because I would go on stage and I'd be like, Mike, like, what's the next song? You forgot to put the set list down. And <laughs> moments like that, I'm like, okay, fun for Carly Hansen tour when it's like not like, you know, the Fonda theater or whatever and you know, Carly's got a pretty big fan base too, but I just would rather avoid that <laughs> for water parks. So we're going to iron out those kinks and, you know, um, I want to rehearse, uh, the nosebleed choreo that I just learned in the music video so I can do that on stage nice. too. Um, and just stuff like that, I think is what I want to work on. Well, I'm looking forward to that tour. I'm looking forward to more music from you. Uh, you did mention you would like to release more music before the tour starts. So, um, do you see yourself working on a body of work or do you see yourself working on like singles before anything? So yeah, we're actually, Mike's ready to kill me. Um, (laughs) because I'm a little bit of a workaholic. I don't like that term though. I'm just like obsessed with, like, I love to do do what you do. I want to do it like every day. And I think Atlantic and Gabe, um, saying to Mike, Hey, so now that we have this water parks tour, um, we have to finish like, half the album or something um so mike is ready to kill me and (laughs) i already said that right (laughs) yeah like he's really ready to but we're gonna be finishing half of the album and then i guess i'll be performing those unreleased songs so i don't know if i'll drop them Mm. but i am dropping um some remixes for nosebleed before i head out hopefully so or while i'm on tour um but definitely around that time there will be that coming out that people can look forward to i feel like this tour will be perfect to kind of test those new songs out as well because it's a different kind of audience it's a bigger show um and it'll maybe guide you and mike on what tweaks to do in you know back in the studio before you guys like finalize the tracks definitely i think that's why we also aren't putting out a new song right before the tour well i mean technically we are putting out a new song but like remixes of nosebleed but a new song in general, um, I think we want to iron that out fully live and having this opportunity to do that is really great. Awesome. Well, congratulations with the success so far with Atlantic and Gabe. And I'm looking forward to catching you on tour. Uh, you guys be sure to check out Sophie Powers' uh, new debut single, Nosebleed, is out now. And thanks for watching here on Front Row Live.